Now we have an overall vector indicated by delta r. Try to break this overall vector into components. I hope you started by writing down the axes, uh, and that would automatically give you your positive directions because we've only shown the positive portions of the axes, as is the conventional approach. And uh, we are intended to assume that this dashed line is parallel to the y-axis. We can assume this dashed line is parallel to the y-axis, because otherwise, how could we solve the problem? All right, um, so we have to draw a right triangle that uses this overall vector as its hypotenuse, and that um, represents the components. Remember that the legs should be parallel to the axes. The legs should be parallel to the axes. Well, we already decided this dashed line is parallel to the y-axis, so I can go ahead and draw that one of the legs overlaps with the dashed line. I'm going to draw a really long line there, just for drawing purposes. Now I have to draw another leg parallel to the x-axis, keeping in mind that this leg should end up perpendicular to the first leg. So if I'm a good drawer, they should come out about perpendicular. Now I can erase the rest of this portion of the line that I don't need. I'll label that this was the information we were originally given. And now we can label the components. This is the uh, x component, because this side is parallel to the x-axis. Did you remember that delta r stands for the overall displacement, and that the x component is delta x? You might have been tempted to think that the x component was delta r sub x. So that would be logical. But that's not the way it turned out. In physics, the x component of the displacement is just delta x. So this is the correct symbol here, not this. You can see that this leg is parallel to the y-axis. We have to figure out the directions of delta y and delta x. Well, we're going to use our little trick. We can imagine that the overall vector is pointing away from this initial point and towards this final point. So the components should be pointing away from the initial point and towards the final point. Now when I draw the arrowheads in over here, I'm going to have two arrowheads on the same place on the blackboard. So I'm trying to draw nice, thin arrowheads so the two arrowheads don't conflate and obscure each other. So try to be neat about your arrowheads here and draw thin arrowheads so you can clearly see the arrowhead on the overall vector and the arrowhead on the y component. We should use question marks to show that we were trying to find the components. And we can label the sides of the right triangle. I think that in these videos, I've almost always figured out the adjacent side first and then done the opposite side. Uh, but maybe you've noticed it doesn't make any difference what order you do it in. If you wanted to, you could start by finding the opposite side and then do the adjacent side. Uh, whatever makes you happy. The adjacent side here has a length indicated by the magnitude of delta y. So don't forget to put the dot in here. The trig functions only give us magnitudes. The hypotenuse was given to us as the variable delta r. That's as much as we can figure out about the over, uh, about the magnitude, but we still need the signed component indicated without a dot. The fact that I left out the dot indicates that now I'm trying to get the sign and not just the magnitude. Well, delta y we decided was pointing up and right, but the positive y-axis is pointing down and left, so delta y is pointing in the negative direction. Delta y is negative delta r cosine beta. Now for the opposite component, that is a length of delta x. That's a magnitude indicated with a dot. Hypotenuse is delta r times sine of theta. Well, that's our magnitude. Let's figure out the sine component without the dot. Delta x was pointing down and right. 
and the positive x-axis is indeed pointing down and right. So that turned out to be positive. We have to indicate that it's positive by putting in a positive sign, just like we would indicate something negative with a negative sign. Use this as an opportunity to build good notation that will help you on these problems and harder problems as well. Indicate the signs on both positive signed components and negative signed components.